Yeah. Right Reverend Helena Opokusa Kodye, Head Tema Joint Church. We also have Reverend Dr. Nana Anyanim Boadjum, founder Jesus Generation Ministries. We have Reverend Kofi Odro from Kumase. We also have our national overseers from some of some of the following countries. Uh, Pastor Soji, Liberia National Overseer. Pastor Daisy Sierra Leone National Overseer, Deep Alive. Pastor Amoni, South Africa National Overseer. He came along with two bishops, Bishop Joseph Kazehila, Chairman Board of Advisors, Chingola, Zambia, and then Bishop Andrew Menda of Zambia Executive uh, Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia Executive Director. Pastor Kaimaka, Deeper Life Bible Church, Sierra Leone. Pastor David Kankam, Church of Pentecost. A chairman. We also have Ministry of Education representative. Heads of Assemblies of God representatives. Head of Church of Pentecost. Apostolic Revelation Society representative. Apostle Listowel Ishira Anok. Preach the word ministry. David Kankam, area executive, Church of Pentecost. We also have Pastor Niran Seriki, National Overseer, Belgium. We also have Pastor Apofori. A GS personal assistance from Lagos. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the convener <laughs> of GCK. <laughs> By the grace of God, I've known the man of God for some time now. And what I know about him is that he is so hungry for nothing in this world but for souls to take to heaven. Like a hungry lion seeking for a prey. He hates nothing in this world. He hates nobody but he hates sin to the core. He's a holy man of God. And by the grace of God tonight, I believe the heavens are open. And he's going to tap the blessings of God for everybody globally. It's my honor to invite my pastor, my general superintendent, my evangelist, my pastor and my teacher. Everybody praise the Lord. Ghana, Accra, everybody. If you know that tonight, the heavens will open upon you. Miracles will come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. 
It's my pleasure to be, my joy to be in Ghana once again. I think I need to let the world know. After Nigeria, Ghana. I came for the first time. Many, many years ago. More than 40 years ago. And the Lord did great and wonderful things. And tonight, a repetition in your life. The glory of God will come upon your life. The wonders of God will come upon your life. And all those who are here, you are here with your heart, your mind, your soul, your body. Everything you desire, the Lord is pouring the blessing of God upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. We're coming to this course and to talk about the glorious visitation. Visitation from heaven. Visitation upon you. Your life will never be the same again. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power. We thank you for impossibilities becoming possible even tonight in Jesus' name. Visit your people. And I pray that as the word penetrates every heart, your power will penetrate every heart in Jesus' name. Confirm the power of the word in every heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can see now in the blessing of the Lord. Tonight, as we come to talk about God's own visitation upon your life, upon your family, God's own visitation in our country here in Ghana. God, God some visitation on the nations of the world. I'm looking at Luke chapter 1. And in Luke chapter 1, we're reading from verse 68. It says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Looking at that verse, the heart of the believer, the expectant believer, and the waiting believer, and the believer that will hold on to the might, to the grace, to the power of the Lord. He blesses the God of Israel because, because, because he has visited his own people. And in visiting them, he redeems them. You connect those two words together. Visiting and redeeming. The visitation and the redemption. A glorious visitation, a glorious redemption. And here the heart of the believer, the mind of the believer, blesses the name of the Lord. And when you get to the point in your life, when you get to the point in your connection relationship with the Lord, and you say, he has visited me, the consequence of that, what follows up on that, is that he has redeemed me. It tells us in verse 69, it says, and he has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Notice those, two, those words we're talking about. Visitation. And also it talks about redemption. And then salvation. Everything follows after that visitation. When you have a glorious visitation, 
you're going to have a great redemption. And you're going to have a gracious salvation. It tells us in verse 70. In verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. He said, it's not a private, it's not a hidden, it's not a secret thing. That the Lord Almighty, he has spoken about that from the beginning of the world. He said, since the world began, from time of Adam and Eve, since the world began, at the time of Israelites and Moses, since the world began with David the king and the prophets, since the world began until now, God has been demonstrating his glorious visitation. And the prophets have spoken about it. And the readers of the Bible, they need to know about that. And you, as you come tonight, and you come to the God of all power, you come to the God of redemption, it says he comes to you with his visitation, his redemption, his salvation, and tonight is your night. Amen. Look at verse 78 there. In verse 78, it says, Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. It's not talking about visiting them somewhere we don't know. He has visited us from on high. That visitation is coming to you tonight. I said the visitation that brings redemption and salvation coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. In verse 79, he assures us to give light to them that sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. That's the foundation we're talking about tonight on the visitation of the almighty God. My topic tonight is divine spectacular visitation as he said. He has not only said it once, he said it over and over since the world began. And now it's coming to reality, fulfillment, realization in your life. The divine spectacular visitation as he said. And no one is counted out tonight. Everyone will be a partaker. What are you? I will be a partaker. The high and the low, the big and the small, the old and the young. I will be a partaker. Divine, spectacular visitation as he, the almighty, has said. Three things we're looking at in the message. Number one, the glorious redemptive visitation from heaven. Number two, the great restorative visitation for our healing. Number three, the gracious regenerative visitation for the humble. Glorious redemption, great restoration, gracious regeneration. As he comes to visit us, 
He has not come empty-handed. And as you come for the visitation of the Lord, you will not go back empty-handed in Jesus' name. Those who are here, are you here? I said those who are here, triple blessing of visitation coming upon your life. Those who are online, any nation, any country where you are, by yourself or in your family, triple blessing of visitation coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's coming from heaven. It's coming for our total healing. And it's coming to the humble. To the people who know I've not got it all. I need more. I go to church, but I want more. I'm a Bible believer, but I want more. I know the Lord a little. I know the Lord much, but I need more. Because there is still more from what that, from where that came from. All the blessings you got before, they came from heaven. And if you remain humble and receptive and submissive, all those blessings, the Lord will add to them tonight in your life. Look at number one. It's a glorious redemptive visitation from heaven. As we're looking at what we're having here today, heaven is not far away. As we touch the Lord by faith, as we call upon the Lord by faith, as we look on the face of Jesus who provides everything for us, he brings the redemptive blessings upon our lives. Look at that again in uh, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And then in verse 77, it says, To give the knowledge of salvation unto his people, by the remission, the removal, the cleansing, the washing of, and the taking away of their sins. He says, he gives us knowledge. The knowledge of what he has brought. The knowledge of what we can have. The knowledge of his goodness and grace upon all men. And as well, the knowledge, and then you say, I hear that. That is what you will do. That is what you will give. And then with that knowledge, you approach the Lord and say, your word says, this is what you'll do. Do it for me now. Salvation will come to you. Redemption. Remission. Remission means it washes us, it cleanses us, and it removes the stain of sin from our lives. There are people who feel the stain of sin abides with them forever and ever and ever. They say they believe, they say they are saved, but they don't believe that the stain of sin had been washed away. And everywhere they go, every time they worship, they are always telling the Lord, the stain of sin, the pollution of sin, the dirt of sin, always there. And they are always confessing that because that's how they feel. But you know, when you come to the redemptive blessing of the Lord, it takes away even that stain of sin from your life. Tonight, it will be now. And then in verse 78, 
It says, through the tender mercy of our God. Some people, they think of harsh mercy. Okay, I'll forgive you, but then you'll whack your head. Harsh mercy. They think of reluctant mercy. I wouldn't have given you this, but okay, okay, have this. But what do I have is tender mercy of our God. As you come tonight, tender mercy. Loving kindness. Gentleness from the Lord. What do you want? I want my sins to be taken away. What do you want? I want redemption. What do you want? I want my sins to be washed away. It will not ask you questions. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? It will not beat you up. He will not criticize you. He will not condemn you. That's the place of the tender mercy of our God. Tonight, you receive tender mercy. What do you receive tonight? What are you asking for tonight? He never rejects anybody. He says, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high from heaven has visited us. And then in verse 79, it says, to give light to them that sit in darkness. It brings light to the darkened heart. Some hearts are darkened. They cannot think of something in the light in the open. Some minds are darkened. And they are totally ignorant of the goodness and the grace of God. Some souls are in the dark, in the dungeon. Not even the candlelight, and no light in the dungeon. They are all confused. They don't know where to go. Everywhere they go, everywhere they turn, it's all darkness. The light of Christ has not shone into the heart. After going up and down, and trying their best, after struggling over struggling, now they siege in darkness. They cannot make any effort anymore. God's light will shine into your life. All the darkness will be taken away. And the sorrow, the sadness, the suffering in darkness, everything will vanish away tonight in Jesus' name. Those who see it in darkness, they also see it in the shadow of death. Death is very near. Where the shadow is, the object that casts the shadow is very near. Those who see it in the darkness of the world, they see it in the darkness of sinful habits. They see it in the darkness of the devil, of Satan, of occultism. Those who see it in the darkness of the ideologies of the world, confusion is there all the time. The people that search in darkness, they, under, they also search under the shadow of death. And they, there's no other redeemer. There's no other way you can escape. Except as the light of the world comes into your life tonight, it has come tonight. And it, it will guide our feet into the way of peace. Christ is the Prince of Peace. 
and is the light of the world. Is the originator of salvation. Is the one that gives the very life and light of God to man. And then when you encounter him, as we are going to do tonight, he will guide your feet into the way of peace. What the opposite of peace? Turbulence in the heart, hatred in life, fighting and violence, malice, evil, doing terrible things to hurt other people. That's the opposite of peace. Do you remember, I'm talking to somebody then, that day you fought, you were violent, and then the other fellow gave it to you, almost matched you out of life, and then you said, I'll never fight anymore. The following week, you went into that again because you didn't have the Prince of Peace in your life. But when the Lord visits you tonight, because I know he will visit you tonight, that nature of the lion, that nature of the serpent, that nature of the wicked, that evil, that hatred, that pugnacious spirit, he'll take out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Even when the people who are still in that spirit of hatred and fighting, when they come to you, you cannot fight anymore. The devil lives in them, but Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Redeemer, lives in you. No evil in your life anymore in Jesus' name. It's the one that gives all those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. It's the one that leads our feet into the way of peace. He will do it for you tonight. Say, he will do it for me tonight. God bless you. You have got it. Let me show you one man before I go to point number two. In Luke chapter 19, Christ Jesus came to town. And there was one man there that wanted to have 